It's the North 1 Group 1 final. Pompton Lakes and Hasbrook Heights. Cardinals versus Aviator. A game that will be dubbed in the air, but ran on the ground. As Hasbrook Heights, the defending Group 1 champs, knocking off New Milford 10 7. In the semifinals, New, Fil New Milford was the top seed, while Pompton Lakes beat off beat the number two seed, Wallington uh, Bunch, 34 to 26 in the semifinal. Hasbrook Heights won the toss, but they will defer. And away we go. The kick is end over and sky kick out of Matthew Juiz. And it's brought back across the 15 yard line. And here comes the Cardinals. Cardinals looking for their first championship since 2013, coached by Scott Mahoney and their quarterback, Kyle Schaefer, who has moved from backup to starter. Backed up last year, was given the starting nod this year. Completing more than 51% of his passes for more than 800 yards. And on first down, it's the Greeny. Get used to hearing that name a lot. Frank Negrini, the junior. Excuse me, that was Sanders. Negrini we featured in the open. Sanders, a good complimentary back as well. And let's meet this Pompton Lakes offense. Schaefer, the quarterback, with Sanders and Negrini in the backfield. John Tr Tannis is the wide receiver, along with Logan Mahoney. Phil Latora is the tight end and on the line from left to right. Flynn, Jezimondo, Presta, Aponte, and Leone. Second down and five after the run by Sanders. We'll set up Pompton Lakes at the 20 yard line. Sanders again, back to back runs. First down and 26. Give up the middle. And that is Negrini. And Negrini standing tall, donning that number 28. Powers for a first down. And the Heights defense on the line from left to right. Wexler, Kim, Asaf, along with Facini, Varga, and Culkin, as well as Purdy. Those are the linebackers and in the backfield. Rink, Clank, and Jenkins. First down and 10 from the 37. Negrini lowering the shoulders, picking up five as he continues to march forward. Greeny averaging eight and a half yards a game. As he and Sanders have been sharing the brunt of the offense so far. And another straight run up the middle. As Travis Colkin makes the stop. Colkin, the team's leading tackler 
for this Hasbro Pikes defense. We've got a player shaking up on the middle of the field. Travis Culkin a little shaken up, but it's good to see him walk out with a little assistance, but able to put weight on both legs. Third down and two from the 45, 9.43 to go in the opening quarter. It's been the Sanders and the Greeny show. The Greeny in the backfield gets the give on third down and he gets stopped. Jordan Wexler with the takedown. Pompton Lakes eight and two on the season, four and one in league play. Set to punt. And a whistle. And a false start. We'll move Pompton Lakes back a little more. So on fourth and seven, Negrini to punt again, end over rank kick, sends back Purdy. And Jaseya Purdy, past the 35, before he gets pushed out of bounds by John Tannis. And that'll bring out the dual threat quarterback, James Clank, the senior. Just seven yards, seven passing yards short, and 31 rushing yards short of being a thousand thousand guy. Has done it all for Hasbro Heights. Frank will start this off at the 38 yard line. Purdy, the man in motion, as he gets the carry running far side. Evades a tackler, gets positive yardage, close towards that first down marker, just say a Purdy. Purdy, a junior, does it all for Hasbrook Heights. And let's meet this offensive line for Heights. Kim Culkin, Roach, Lorman, Varga, and the tight end is Jordan Wexler. The two wide receivers are Ian Rink and just say a Purdy. Nico Ficini and Zaire Jenkins in the backfield, James Clank under center. Purdy again has a first down. As he gets to midfield.
Heights at midfield. And a scoreless first quarter. And he gets taken down. James Clank nowhere to go. As Ronnie Aponte comes in and lays the hit. Joining Aponte on that line, Drew Flynn, Austin Leone, and Justin Garcia. The linebackers, Leo Silvestri, Frank Negrini, Kyle Schaefer, as well as Kyle Klenoit. The DBs, Jason Testino, John Tannis, and Steven Sanders. On second and ten from midfield. Clank with Ficini in the backfield. And a false start. We'll make it second and 15. False start against the Aviators, five yards. Second and 15. This is the third time that Pompton Lakes and Hasbrook Heights have met in the state sectional finals. Pompton Lakes winning both of those matchups, the first one coming in 2005. And, of course, their last championship in 2013. Clank rolling out. Still rolling. Lobbing it up and then out of bounds. A whistle blown as well. But good pressure out of the D-line for Pompton Lakes to set up third and long. Clank on third and long, flushed out of the pocket again, steps up, firing, near side, almost intercepted, off the fingertips of Frank Negrini. And this will send out the special teams on both sides. Purdy set to boot this one away. Low snap. End over and kick. As Tannis fields it. Just past the 20. Lowers the shoulder. Picks up 13. Cardinals will start this drive off at their own 34-yard line. 6.08 to go, scoreless in the first quarter. Schaefer under center, the handoff is to Negrini, running near side. Tries to sweep, got away with an offensive face mask. As Negrini lumbering for a couple of yards. Cheney gets credited with the tackle. On second down, Schaefer back to pass, gets hit as he throws. 
And incomplete. Will Vera causing havoc. Two ground and pound teams have played well defensively to get to this point this year. And we're seeing the defense stand strong early on. And again, Jordan Wexler takes down Schaefer. Seven and a half sacks for Jordan Wexler. And another three and out. Punt is up, Purdy ranging over. Takes a good bounce, but then rolls out of bounds. And Heights will set up shop at their own 39-yard line. Purdy gets the pitch, reverses Fields, running, near side flag is down. That's going to be a face mask. And Purdy wants a face mask as well. He wants offsetting penalties. Although he threw the face mask first on Ronnie Aponte. And that's going to go against Pompton Lakes. That's interesting because Purdy used his offhand to grab the face mask of Aponte. But nonetheless, Heights will take it. First and 10 at the Cardinals 46. Three receivers near side, two receivers up top as Clank is alone in the backfield in the gun. Four minutes to go in the scoreless first quarter as Purdy goes in motion. Fakes the handoff, Clank runs forward. And he picks up five. James Clank on the keeper. Straight ahead following Norman, Michael Norman, 55, and number 58 on the block. Ball at the 41 of the Cardinals. Second and five. On second down and five. Purdy again has a first down and more to the 20. The 15 gets pushed out of bounds by Tannis. The Aviators know if they give the ball to Jaseya Purdy, he will make opposing defenses pay. Clank again. 
Purdy in the backfield. The receiver far side is Rink as Purdy gets another handoff. Stutter steps and then bounces out of bounds. Two fifty nine to go opening quarter. Three receivers up top. As it is Purdy, Ficini, and Rink. Clank running near side as he crosses. Almost crossed the ten yard line. Thought forward progress would give it to him, but he'll set up shop now at the eleven. This will bring up third down. So third and call at five. Purdy again. It's a counter, but nowhere to go. Steven Sanders brings him down. And it will be fourth and four. As this will bring up Juiz. Or Weiss, excuse me. And then a timeout as Nick Del Calzo will talk it over. Nick Del Calzo will send out Matt Weish to kick the extra point. It will be a 27-yard field goal. And the lefty kick is up, and it sails through. So Matthew Weish from 27 yards out gives Heights a 3-0 lead with 2.11 to go in the opening quarter. Only the second made field goal for Matt Weish this season. He's now two for four. And a new season long, the only other field goal he made was from 21 yards, this time from 17 yards. Excuse me, for 27 yards. But you see, he's got a mighty boot as that one soars up high. 
And it's once again fielded by Tannis. And Tannis crossing the 25-yard line. As Pompton Lakes will come back onto the field. 2.04 to go in the opening quarter. Play action on first down, batted at the line, caught by Schaefer. And it's a loss of a couple of yards. Now while it's instinctual for Schaefer to make that catch, it might have been better if he just batted it down and just take second and 10 instead of second and 12. by Hasbrook. Peter Lorman. seconds of rolling. Schaefer gives it off to Negrini. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and then marches forward, but he's going to be well short after the gain of six. As that might do it for the first quarter. Not sure what the difference is between the game and play clock. Ten seconds and winding down. And that will do it for quarter number one. So we'll finish off this drive when we start the second quarter. But after one, Hasbrook Heights with a 3-0 lead over Pompton Lakes on News 12 Varsity's Game Time. Start this second quarter off with a punt. Josiah Purdy makes the fair catch. And Heights will start off this second quarter after Matthew Weish drilled a 27-yard field goal for the only score of the game. Heights with a 3-0 lead over Pompton Lakes. A game that will be filled with a lot of running and a lot of defense. Purdy in the backfield. And Purdy gets the run, bounces off the line, still on his feet running laterally, and then gets brought down by a swarm of white and red. Purdy on the carry, pulling a tackle, pushed back by Tannis from Reed 
John Tannis had initial contact before the rest of the crew came in to finish out the tackle. Now on second down. Clank, it's a play action. Pumps a couple of times. Good coverage by the secondary, and it's intercepted. It's intercepted by Frank Negrini. <laughs> Negrini known more for what he can do on the ground. But a stealthy linebacker that he is. Picks off the pass. Good field position for Pompton Lakes to try and get on the scoreboard. Negrini, it's the Wildcat. Just going to air it out. Going deep. Almost intercepted. John Tannis, the intended receiver, was fighting with Ian Rink for position. And after that, it will just be second down. Gutsy play calling by Scott Mahoney. He's not afraid to go into the Wildcat. And the Greeny. Not afraid to throw the ball either. But that ball was up there for a while. Now Schaefer back under center in the gun with Sanders and the Greeny joining him in the backfield. As the give is to Sanders. And Sanders picks up three. Third down and eight from the 41-yard line. 10-15 and rolling in the second quarter. Phil Latora is the receiver on the near side. Trips receivers up top. Negrini in the backfield with Schaefer in the gun. Schaefer passing on third down. He's got a first down. Steven Sanders hauling it in to the 19-yard line. A 22-yard pickup. And here come the Cardinals. Hurry up, ball friends. The Greeny, but a whistle and a flag on the false start. So after that 22-yard gain, push the Cardinals back five. Pair receivers near side. However, it's the Greeny on the run. Has a first down and a touchdown. Frank Negrini, his 26th touchdown of the season. And the Cardinals are on the board. Greeny, an integral part to the Pompton Lakes offense. Gets him on the board. As Harry Herrera to kick the extra point.
And he drills it. A 7-3 lead with 9.17 to go in the second quarter. The Cardinals on top of the Aviators. Uh, News 12 varsity is game time. There's a roughing the kicker penalty on Hasbrook Heights. So that'll move Pompton Lakes up to kick it from the Heights 45 yard line. An onside kick attempt and then it's just smothered by Hasbrook Heights as that was Nathaniel Kim. Not a bad idea because if, obviously, if Pompton Lakes recovers, then they get the ball in, in good field position. But either way, the way that their defense has played so far, they wouldn't mind giving the ball. And... Heights' his own 39-yard line, and that's where they'll start this drive off, first and 10, 9.16 to go in the second quarter. Clank with Ficini in the backfield. Gets the snap, gives to Ficini, and Nico is brought down. Drew Flynn. Nico Ficini, his first touch, greeted by number 75, Drew Flynn. Drew Flynn, the team's leading tackler with his first TFL today. Clank, play action. Completes it to Wexler. And Wexler across the 45 yard line up to the 46. Pickup of eight. We'll set up third down and three. Clank getting the sign. Play clock at five as Clank gets the snap off. Powers forward, has a first down. Everyone get on the K train. A first down into Pompton Lakes territory. yard pickup. First down and 10 at the 43 yard line. Play clock at four. Purdy in motion. Clank will keep it himself as he marches forward to gain four. 
29, Wexler. Tackle made by number 16, Kyle Shaker. Seven minutes remaining, first half. Second and seven at the 40 of the Cardinals. Classic five versus six seed in the North One Group One final. Clank meets Phil Latora. Seventh sack of the season. As Latora looks like he was shot out of a cannon. Powering his way into the backfield. Now third and ten, midway through the second quarter. 7-3 lead for Pompton Lakes. Clank to Purdy. Purdy inside the hash marks. And met by the steel curtain of the Cardinals defense. Receivers up top, two receivers near side. 5.05 and rolling. The man in motion was Purdy. Clank over the middle. It's complete. J.C. Pagan. And the ball comes loose and then is recovered by Ficini. Big conversion by Clank to Pagan. The ball spotted at the 18, a gain of 22. Clank, straight draw, following his blockers as he spins forward inside the 10-yard line. Second down and two. Ball on the 10. Clank will call his own number again as he scampers to the house. Touchdown, James Clank. And Hasbrook Heights back out in front. Leash for the extra point. Good snap, good hold. Kick is good as well. 3.53 to go in the first half. A 10-7 lead for Hasbrook Heights on News12Varsity.com.
Nine plays, 61 yards. Capped off by a 10-yard touchdown run, James Clank. His ninth rushing touchdown of the season. As Heights takes the lead, 10-7, with 3.53 to go in the second quarter. Compton Lakes will get the ball back with all three of their timeouts. End over and kick. Is a liner. And a reverse. John Tannis. After getting the ball from Jason Testino. Well, you saw Hasbrook Heights take advantage of the short field that was given to them by Pompton Lakes. Remember, there was a roughing the kicker penalty. Moved Pompton Lakes up 15 yards. They kicked off from Hasbrook Heights' own 45-yard line as Hasbrook Heights took the ball from their own 39-yard line, and then nine plays later, scored a touchdown. Perhaps the argument could have been if Pompton Lakes just boots that into the end zone or just doesn't give them the additional yards. Perhaps Hasbrook Heights still scores, but you never know, and there's an opportunity for Heights to not give up the points. Either way, after the first down, Negrini with a run up the middle as he gets brought down by Peter Lorman. Second down and six. Sanders and Mahoney, the receiver's on the near side, but another give to Negrini. Negrini bounces off the line and then goes forward. Across the 40 to the 42. A pickup of three will be third and three. Scott Mahoney conceding earlier this week that he knew that Negrini would be good, but not this good. And Negrini is quoted in one of the local papers as saying that the coaching staff just always believed in him, and for that reason, he was able to believe in himself. As we get a timeout called by Pompton Lakes. So exactly two minutes to go in this second quarter. A three-point lead for Hasbrook Heights over Pompton Lakes on News12Varsity.com. Final two minutes of the first half, third down and three from the 42, a 10-7 lead for the Aviators. Schaefer, the give off to Stan Sanders as he gets stood up and back to the line of scrimmage. As Nathaniel Kim is fired up. Two. 
So it'll be fourth down and two. Punting formation for Pompton Lakes. And Negrini, couple of steps. Punts it inside the 30 yard line to the 27 yard line. Hasbrook Heights winning the opening toss, but deferring to the second half. Now let's just see if they don't run down the clock here. Three receivers far side of the field. Clank. Keep it himself. Running up the gut. As he marches forward, picks up five yards, under a minute to go. Here's Purdy. Purdy with room to run has a first down and more. Pass Tannis to the 20, the 10. Nobody is going to stop. Just say it, Purdy. 68 yards to the house. As the Heights soar to a 16-7 lead. What a stiff arm. Just say a Purdy. His 10th rushing touchdown of the season. And what a way to put an exclamation point to end this second quarter. Weish for the extra point, and this should be an offside. So just a re-kick as the ball gets moved up just a couple of inches. Weish sets himself. Spencer Lee to hold. High snap. And the kick is chipped in. Josiah Purdy. 68 yards to the end zone. And with 22 seconds to go in this first half, a 17-7 lead for Hasbrook Heights on News 12 Varsity's game time. Twenty-two seconds to go. Weish boots this one right down Broadway. Steven Sanders with the return. 
Stop just short of the 25. They'll spot him at the 24. And popped in Lakes to take over. On first down. It's a handoff. Negrini with the flag down. Has a first down. Strong and we'll see what the penalty is. By Negrini brought down by Purdy. Pompton Lakes trying to hurry up and try and catch Heights on its toes. And a timeout taken with two seconds left. Timeout called by the Cardinals with two so for Pompton Lakes, they could either kneel or just heave it downfield and try and steal some points before headed into the locker room. And of course, the message on the near side of the field to Hasbrook Heights. Just knock down any pass or just make sure you tackle the ball carrier before he gets to the end zone. Final play of the first half. The handoff is to Negrini, marching forward. Brought down around midfield. Has the first down, but doesn't have enough time. We've played two full. Hasbrook Heights leading this one 17-7 on News 12 Varsity's game time.
As we get ready to go for the second half, Hasbrook Heights has a 17-7 lead over Pompton Lakes in the North 1 Group 1 final. The defending champs 24 minutes away from winning a back-to-back -back sectional state titles. Colby Nelson, our producer, Elio Velez, the live caster. I'm John Perez. Thank you so much for making us a part of your Saturday evening from Kane University in Union, New Jersey. On this Super Saturday on News12Varsity.com. Giving you coverage from MetLife Stadium, Rutgers, and now Kane University. Pompton Lakes set to boot this one away. Harry Herrera. A short kick that is fielded by James Clink. As he will move his, excuse me, not Clink. Ian Rink will move to the 40 yard line. Well, the scoring summary for Hasbrook Heights, Matthew Weish got the Aviators on the board with a 27-yard field goal. Then James Clank had a 10-yard touchdown run to make it 10-7, and Josea Purdy a 68-yard touchdown run to give Heights a 17-7 advantage. The lone score for Pompton Lakes. Who else? 
Frank Negrini, a 24-yard touchdown run. And after the penalty, Heights will move back five. And then Jordan Wexler coming off, and there might be something wrong with his helmet. Might be a broken strap. And now Clank on first and 15, hands it off. Facini, Facini the senior. As he gets barreled by Leo Silvestri. And a pickup of four. Three receivers on the far side of the field. Purdy in the backfield. Ficini is the player in the slot. Clank runs it near side. Not a lot of room to run. Does get a seam. And forward progress will be very generous to James Clank. As he just backs down the defenders. And he picks up seven yards. Clank the senior can do it all for the Aviators. He's had his number called a lot. And he'll call it himself again. Gets a first down and more. Pass the 40. And a gain of 14 for Mr. Clank. Well, Del Calzo knew that Clank could be special. He said that his progression has been exceptional. And he knew as early as Clank's sophomore year that he had the ability to not only take over the starter's role, but lead his team deep into the playoffs and contend for a championship. Played defensive back last year. And has now been QB1. As number one just gets a lone yard. Clink with a hard clap, then gives it off to Purdy, who's still on his feet. How did you say a Purdy not go down? Third down and five. Five, uh, excuse me, 8.30 and rolling. With the ball on the 35. Here's the give, Purdy. Down by 
fourth and two coming up for the Aviators. So now fourth down and two. Now we saw Weish earlier in the game drill a 27-yard field goal. That's about the limit that Del Calzo will give him. So four down territory. Clank in the gun. Good to see Jordan Wexler back in the game. Clank the keeper. Bottled up. Turnover on downs. Big stop for the Cardinals. Silvestri and Garcia in on the takedown. And just the stop that the Cardinals needed. Schaefer with Negrini to his right, Sanders to his left. And he gives it off to his right to Negrini, burrowing up the middle. And it's going to take three defenders to take down Frank Negrini. But not before he gets a first down. When I spoke to Del Calzo earlier in the week. I asked him how you prepare for a player like Negrini. And he said you really can. And, and that's true because while you can perhaps in, in other aspects of the game prepare for a mobile quarterback that can throw it. You can have your running back be a scout and and prepare your defense that way, but there's not many players on Hasbro Heights' roster that can simulate how hard Negrini runs. Second down and 10, ball at the 47. Sanders, the man in motion. Schaefer to pass, dumps it off Negrini. And Negrini stumbles and then is brought down for good measure by Nico Ficini. Schaefer in the shotgun on third and nine. Has to roll out, is pressured, uncorks a deep ball. That cannot be hauled in. Zaire Jenkins almost coming up with the interception. But nonetheless, a stop on third down. So Hasbrook Heights lining up as if it will be a punt. And now Negrini does as well. End over and kick for Negrini. Purdy calling for the fair catch, and he will just let it roll as it gets picked up by Phil Latora. So a good punt out of Negrini. Yeah, with 5.06 to go in the third quarter. The Aviators to take off again. Clank with a man in motion. 
Purdy up the middle. Picks up three. Plank again on second down and seven with the ball on the 15 and a flag. As this will push Heights back five. Clank a reverse. And not that time, says the defense of Pompton Lakes. As Michael Robertson gets taken back. And taken down for a loss. Third and 14. Ball on the eight. Clank almost in his own end zone. From the gun, blitz coming, rolls out. Has some space to run. Gets a block, but not before he gets walled off by his opposite number, Kyle Schaefer. Some QB on QB crime. And Schaefer making a big stop to set up fourth down. As Purdy is set to punt this one away, John Tan is back to return. Purdy, a spiraling kick goes over the head of Tannis. And a good punt will be downed at the 32-yard line. Ian Rink in full pursuit. So we mentioned earlier, these two teams have a history of meeting in the state sectional finals. Third meeting between the two, Pompton Lakes with a 2 0 edge, Hasbrook Heights looking to end that streak. And now second and 10 with the ball on the 32. Schaefer, two receivers near side of the field, but it's another handoff, and that's Steven Sanders. And Sanders with an eight-yard pickup. And a timeout as Marco Sochoa shaking up for Hasbrook Heights. So we'll step aside, 156 to go in the third quarter, a 10-point lead for Hasbrook Heights.
Third down and two from the Cardinals' 40-yard line. Schaefer in the shotgun. Negrini off to his left. Passing. Gets a first down. It's John Tannis. And you're going to hear some complaints out of the black and orange crowd. But, and they have a point too, because he did run back. There really wasn't forward progress on that one. Nonetheless, first and 10 at the 43. Negrini charging up the middle. Under a minute to go and a false start. <laughs> Clock continuing to wind down. 50 seconds and ticking. Second down and nine. Tannis goes in motion. Negrini fumbles the football. It's picked up by Purdy. Purdy past the 30, the 20, the 10. What a scoop and touchdown, just say a Purdy. His second touchdown today. Both have been in that end zone. One on offense, now on defense, and the Aviator soar. Just say a Purdy, 45 yards after that fumble recovery. Giving Heights a 23-7 lead pending the extra point as Wish comes on to sweep that one away. There's an offside. And that's the second time that we've seen Pompton Lakes jump on the PAT. Now no penalty. Weesh drills it. Your score with 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. Hasbrook Heights 24, Pompton Lake 7 on News 12 Varsity's Game Time.
23 seconds to go in quarter number three. Weish kicking this one away. Tannis backpedaling and then charging forward. And Tannis stops before his own 25-yard line. It's getting late early here for Pompton Lakes. Only 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. As the Cardinals, even though the score might not dictate it, have played well on the defensive side of the ball. Of course, Negrini coughing up the football. It was scooped up by Jaseya Purdy. To give Hasbrook Heights an additional seven points. Twenty one unanswered points by Hasbrook Heights. And their defense has stood tall. 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. Schaefer, first and 10 at the 15. And Schaefer rolling out after the snap, firing over the middle. It's intercepted! Intercepted by the Aviators. And then running near side with the takeaway, Zaire Jenkins. What a way to close out this third quarter for Hasbrook Heights. He came over the middle, got in front of the receiver, and was spun out of bounds. And Hasbrook Heights, an opportunity to pile up the score. Four seconds to go in the third quarter. This could just be a simple draw, and both of these teams will head down to the other side of the field and begin action in the fourth quarter. Clink, straight up the middle. Time expires. But what a quarter for the defense of Hasbrook Heights. First, just say a party with the fumble recovery and then a 45-yard dash to the end zone. And then just now, Zaire Jenkins causing the pick. Three quarters in the books. Hasbrook Heights with a 24-7 lead over Pompton Lakes in the North 1 Group 1 championship bout. We get ready to start the fourth and final quarter of the season. It'll be second down and five, ball on the nine, Hasbrook Heights with the ball. James Clank under center, hands it off, Ficini, and flags are going to be thrown in there. The Aviators with an opportunity to put their mark on this game. And 
after the face mask. As it is a spot foul, it'll be second down and one. Ball at the five. And here comes Clank. Gets a snap, hands it off. Vicini stops and starts, gets a first down, will be short of the end zone. But a nice four-yard run out of Nico Ficini. Ficini, an efficient runner as well. Averages just under seven yards a carry. Check that, they'll push him back two yards. But nonetheless, first and goal at the three. Clank with Ficini to his left. Clank will keep it himself. Put his head down, push forward. And only gain a yard. Clank gets a signal from his OC. There's the handoff, and there's the exclamation point. Nico Ficini finally gets into the end zone to give the Heights a 30 spot. For Ficini, that's his sixth touchdown of the season. And Hasbrook Heights to go for two. Clank in the gun. And then a flag. This is interesting that if they go for two, if you're just thinking from a running clock standpoint, say Hasbrook Heights gets the two. Remember, that in New Jersey, you have to lead by 35 for the clock to continue to wind down. It would just be a 32-7 lead for Hasbrook Heights. There's a couple of players go in motion. Clank goes back to the shotgun. They stack the box. Clank looking right, throwing left. End zone touchdown. Now check that. The two-point conversion is good. As Marino hauls in the two-point conversion. And with 10.46 to go, a 32-7 lead for Hasbrook Heights. So Anthony Marino hauling it in. Anyway, to get back to that point earlier, Hasbrook Heights would have to lead by 35, which would mean they'd have to put up 42. And it might be a little tougher for them to put up 10 more points just depending on how long Pompton Lakes hold on to the football. Saw that earlier in the playoffs, actually. 
So I'm sure the rest of the audience remembers that polar vortex at the beginning of November or just a couple of weeks ago. It was like 20 degrees just for that weekend in the tri-state area. South Brunswick uh, actually missing an extra point and then going for two to win their first round matchup, 35 nothing. And in that situation, you say, all right, you're already up 33 nothing. What do you go for two for? Well, it was to get everyone out of the frigid cold. Not as cold as that night. But Hasbrook Heights, get ready for the pun, has been stone cold on defense. Told everyone to get ready. 10.39 to go. The Aviators looking for back-to-back -back state sectional titles. Pompton Lakes looking for the historical comeback. Three receivers near side. Schaefer gets set to throw, looks towards the screen, steps up, fire. And it's complete as that low pass was hauled in by Logan Mahoney, son of head coach Scott Mahoney. And Logan playing in his final game of his high school career, a senior. Schaefer steps up over the middle, incomplete. There was contact up the middle as Steven Sanders was the intended receiver. Negrini across midfield to the 40, still on his feet to the 30 before he gets dragged out of bounds by Peter Lorman. A 29 yard pickup and a fresh set of downs for Pompton Lakes. On first down, Schaefer fakes left, and then gets pushed down. Michael Lorman. Getting it deep, Michael Lorman, number 55, the junior. And a penalty against Hasbrook Heights. Under 10 to go in the fourth quarter. Schaefer, play action. And Jordan Wexler with the sack. Jordan Wexler, Eight and a half sacks on the season for Jordan Wexler. He has a knack for getting to the backfield and taking down opposing quarterbacks. And on that last play, you can see why. Schaefer throwing, far side, touchdown! What a grab! Steven Sanders laying out. A 29-yard touchdown catch. Beautiful throw from Schaefer. Even nice lunging grab by Sanders to cut the deficit.
Herrera to kick the extra point. Schaefer to hold, high snap. Hold is good, and the kick is good as well. 9.07 to go in the fourth quarter. Pompton Lakes not out of it yet. A 32-14 lead here at Kane University on News12Varsity.com. to go in the fourth quarter. Hasbrook Heights with a 32-14 lead. And here's the onside kick as it is easily recovered by the front line of the special teams unit for Hasbrook Heights. You have to imagine down three scores. Pompton Lakes trying to steal a possession and then a score. For Hasbrook Heights, just keep on keeping on. And Josiah Purdy has done well in all facets of the game. As he heads forward, a flag is down, and a player shaken up. As Ronnie Aponte is shaken up. And the training staff comes out to check him out. A holding penalty, moving back Hasbrook Heights. Eight fifty four to go in this fourth quarter. Be first and 14 at the 45. Oh, 
Clank checking the sideline. Now gets the snap, gives it off to Purdy. Purdy sidestepping, and then gets brought down. And a little extracurricular activity. As Austin Leon with a big tackle out of bounds. And then a flag comes in late. And this might just be on the sideline. against Leone. Plank in the shotgun again with Ficini behind him. Receiver up top. Wexler the fullback. Five up front for Pompton Lakes. Ficini gets the give. As he hustles forward three yards. Hasbrook Heights knocking off Cedar Grove and New Milford to set up a date with Pompton Lakes in this state sectional final. And they have not looked back as Ficini, another give. Del Calzo in his 33rd year. The Hasbrook Heights grad lauding his senior class and his senior quarterback. Clank looking ahead. He's got a first down and more inside the 15-yard line. Fifteen yard pickup. We're almost at the midway point in this fourth quarter. Here's Purdy. Can't shake the D line. Second and 13, six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Here's Purdy again, and Purdy, step out of bounds. Yeah. 
And now the clock kept running before, and that might be adjusted now for the referees. Now 15 seconds ran off. Not sure if that's what's being adjusted now. Del Calzo's getting an explanation. So it was a 14 second runoff. 5.43 to go in the fourth quarter. It'll be third down in nine. The ball on the 13. Clank, play action, throwing, end zone Purdy. His third touchdown today, second on offense. And Hasbrook Heights continuing to pour it on. It started with the play action to Purdy. He had some open space, hauled it in. And it's a 38-14 lead for Hasbrook Heights. As Weish will kick the extra point. And it's all pure for Weish. 5.38 to go. A 25-point lead for the Heights on news12varsity.com. Matthew Weish getting ready to send the special teams in unison up the field after he boots this one away. Jaseya Purdy, three touchdowns today. He has a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and then a fumble recovery that he brought to the house. So on first and 10 from the 31. Schaefer stepping up, firing incomplete. In the vicinity of Nico Faschini. He felt he should have had it as the ball went through the wickets. And it'll just be second down. Five and a half to go, fourth quarter. Schaefer again, rolling out. And the pass is caught by Logan Mahoney. And at 
after that, just a two yard gain. Schaefer on third down. Steps up, firing over the middle. It's intercepted. Ian Rink. Rink to the 30. To the 20, he's brought down. And that should just about do it. Third turnover today. Second interception by the defense. And with 5.02 to go, the Aviator fans can start to feel it. Here's the handoff for Sheeney. Running laterally, then forward, and he gets pushed out of bounds. And a flag is down in the backfield. And a hold against Heights. First down at 16. Hasbrook appearing as if they just want to run down the clock. Ficini in the backfield. Purdy up top. Wexler is the fullback. And a delay of game. On first and way long, Ficini again. Running, has a seam, then gets taken down as he stays in bounds. After the five yard, excuse me, after the 10 yard pickup, second and 11. Four and a quarter to go. And Hasbrook Heights will call a timeout. Well, Hasbrook Heights really taking their time. You would think they were the team that was down 25.
4.07 to go. Second and 11, ball on the 20. Clink again. This time it's Purdy. As he gets brought down by Justin Garcia. Hasbrook Heights making their home fans in their rooting section wait a little longer. 3.30 to go in the fourth quarter, up 25. Took a timeout before. Here is Ficini. Ficini inside the 10, and he's got another first down. If you're thinking a uh, touchdown would give them a 41 point edge, a 42 point edge. Nope, check that. No, nope. be 46 14. Right, and I'm trying to do math. So 32. There we go. Ficini. Nowhere to go. Justin Garcia again, back to back tackles for Garcia. Two oh five and rolling. Four seconds on the play clock. Clank gets the snap. Ficini. And he gets gobbled up by the defense. Now victory formation, it appears, for Hasbrook Heights. Crowd starts to file out on the far side. There's the first kneel down. The entire mantra this year has been back to back. They're 48 seconds away from doing so. Gatorade bath upcoming at the near sideline. There's the kneel down. Turnover on downs. Now we'll just play this one out. But hugs and celebration all around. And a happy bunch for Hasbrook Heights. We'll speak to our player of the game after this 35 seconds runs out. But credit Pompton Lakes, the number six seed coming into the playoffs, getting to the title game, but it'll be number five seed, Hasbrook Heights, to hoist the trophy. Perhaps one more play. Sanders got the first carry of the game, 
as he runs far side, will stay inbounds. Asbrook Heights starting to celebrate. Here's the countdown. Back to back, North one, group one, state sectional champions. 39-14, your final.